Have you been playing Call of Dragons and wondering why are we fighting in Season 1 or Season 2? Or to be honest, where did all these factions come from? Well, guess what? I've got your backs because it's the Christmas period and over the next five days, going all the way up onto Christmas Day, we're going to do a nice lore series where each day you're going to learn a little bit of the story of Call of Dragons alongside the additional videos that we upload. So I hope you enjoy today's video on the Celestials and the beginning of the Tamaris as a planet that we are all fighting on. Before we understand season one, all the factions in Call of Dragons, we need to go back to the beginning where the gods fought. That is correct. Tamaris was created and more importantly, the Celestials and the Behemoths were created all in this light versus darkness story. So let's get into it. Let's understand why Tamaris was created, why all the races were created, and more importantly, the beginning of the birthplace that we all know as Tamaris. So the story begins from the tales of the humans. They give us actually some good info to how things began with the Trians orcs to back it up as well for any factual knowledge in that story. And as in the story itself, it begins pretty similar to a lot of religious stories or even stories from fictional tales that we know of today, where there was some sort of God of beginning and what he did was create two gods to maintain the balance within the universe. We know these two gods as Leosa, the God of light, and Landa, the God of darkness. The events from here are unclear. However, from the current information in game, we can assume both of these gods were in some sort of intercelestial style battle for power. And during this fight is when Leosa, the god of light, suffered some sort of blow that caused the birth of the planet and the continent of Tamaris that we all know of in season one and what we fight on together in every future character. Lander, the god of darkness, was actually the one that created the behemoths and the darklings that we are all currently fighting. And we don't know if this was because of the corruption of the god himself that put his power into some of these spirits or different types of beings on the planet during the time but by doing this they got corrupted and the corruption went through their bloodstreams and obviously created the darklings that you guys know of today but we fight in every single day but those were only the foot soldiers for the lander army like we said we have the behemoths and the behemoths were actually a lot more scarier in the olden times when they were talked about being these massive beasts that were in space almost that were just massive as big as planets being able to just cause so much destruction and the behemoths we have now are just fragments of their power but the cool thing is with the story is actually like i say with leosa because leosa during this fight obviously had a more bigger impact of the story of call of dragons and here is why suffering the blow from lander and obviously creating the planets and the birthplace of tamaris as we know of he also was on the back foot and resorted into creating as we know of the celestials and firstly he, he the way he did this was by creating the Cetaria sancta which is the birthplace of the greater or lesser sancti and these are the actual names of the true names of the forms of the celestials that we know are in game as actual playable heroes that i'm not going to spoil until a little bit later in the story as well on this they also had the greater Sanctai. The greater Sanctai though are the three main powerful angels that almost kind of dictated the power of how strong these guys were. And the names of these were quite, as you can imagine, straightforward. We had the Sanctum of War, we had the Sanctum of Wisdom, and the Prime Sanctai. And from the story, what we know of, the Sanctum of War's actual name was Diana. And she understood the threat of Lander and the Behemoths within the 
universe that's coming after obviously the god of light so she went to white wing peak what she's located in the seasonal one map and that is the birthplace of all the celestials in the game and then she did this pretty simply she just grabbed the souls and she asked the souls of lost emissaries that if they would fight by her side and if they did the the deal was simple they would take form of this female embodiment of the god of war herself and be a celestial being fighting for the purpose of leosa and as we said that is the cool thing about the story that is only a little snippet and we already understand where the League of Order faction's flying unit, the Celestials, one of the favorited by players. Where did they come from? And that kind of gives us already some explanation. However, when it comes to the other two greater sanctums, the Sanctum of Wisdom and the Prime Sanctum, there isn't unfortunately that I found that much information on them. So So unfortunately, until maybe the new seasons come out, more heroes come out, or artifacts as well, we're going to have to wait on that story and put it on pause and hopefully get a bit more information to then continue our assumptions and get behind the full story of Call of Dragons. However, we do have more information on the lesser sancti. So we've gone over the big boys, the three big sanctums that the God of Light created here. And the three gods basically had the, the, the three greater sancti, should I say, had the five lesser ones. And these are almost, you can imagine, in like religious terms, like your five, you know, foundations or your 10 commandments, you know, all these rules that were posed with on these five lesser angels and by completing their task, they was empowered in some sort of way. And one of the lesser sanctities was the angel of law. And we actually know this angel in game as fear, the one and only. Yes, she's the angel of law and she was created by the god of light. The other one that we know of in game, as you can imagine now, spoiler alert, is Atheus. Yes, he's the angel of insight. But with a little bit of a story background, he did break some of his actual duty. And that's why he's got now the name as the Auspice, because of breaking what he had to do as his duty as the angel of insight. However, we do know the other three names of the main angels. We've got the, an the, the lesser angels, that is. We've got the Solitor, or that is named the Angel of Healing. Then we also have the Angel of Knowledge, which is also named Maggie. And then we also finally have the Angel of Strength, that is named Venator. So it's really cool that we have their angel names, or the names that they would be referred to in-game, as you would know as if you look at fear you will see the angel of law or the aspect of law if you look on uh, atheist you can see the, again the auspice title tied to him so these might be the ones that we would see tied to them when we have them unlocked in future potentially magic heroes in call of dragons so let's just take a quick pause because I know I've gone through quite a lot there, but let's just break down what I just said and put it in a nice, easy summary of what's going on. Because there's almost a massive holy war against the light and dark, you know, good and evil, the, the best, it's the simplest of all stories that's going on. And this is between the celestials and the darklings, and this is aging all the way back, as you can see through all the information popping up on the screen, question mark, slash zero so this is beginning of timeline of the story of call of dragons but because of this old age old tale that's been going on we had the god of light leoso obviously suffer some sort of injury and that injury is what created tamaris and you're probably wondering how do we know this and that is because again from the different stories of the treants the humans, the orcs, all the different races all align in the exact same like line area, but they're not able to basically confirm it because obviously they're seeing things from different zones. They're not really communicating at that time because they're basically at war with each other. So let's have a look at Tamaris. 
Because now when we look at Tamaris itself, we know some sort of timeline for the planet itself. And more importantly, our content of season one and two, because that is what actually gives us a massive amount of information on what's going on in the story, as well as how things were created in the lore of Call of Dragons. So from this injury that I'm assuming happened to Leosa, the God of Light, what we see is his teeth, as they have been named, in the quotations of the orc origin story and that is where the obviously birthplace is of mount dreadfang so if you go over to mount dreadfang in season one you're gonna be able to actually read this story and check it out yourself where it talks about the the teeth of leosa being the the creators of what's coming out of the ground and what birthed life of such a harsh tough race that needed to withstand the, the harsh environments around there which was the orcs but we also have the other ones, right? We have the Treants. And Treants in season one have a birthplace called Winterheath, which is located on the bottom left side of the map. And if you look at the birthplace of the Treants and even read some of Garwood's story, you'll understand that the Treants originally wasn't what they were today. They were just a simple Treant, you know? They were just kind of their basic orc, maybe, you know, imagine, you know, a normal tree that we can imagine today, right? But what happened were during this time, this fight happened and obviously shrapnel and just, you know, a massive blast happened, right? Which caused Leosa to lose some sort of, you know, damage to him. And what that did were rain comets down, which might, might sound a little bit familiar to what you guys know of in season one here right because season one has the raining down meteorites that births all of the darklings but instead this meteorite didn't birth darklings it destroyed winterheath and winterheath became this small brittle tree that just didn't ever recover and is internally charred but what it did do was enchant the tree itself and the tree ants that were birthed there to be as you guys know of today as the iron bark tree ants the infantry units for the spring wardens and as well as goward the main hero for the tree boys right so i really love the story of Honestly, Call of Dragons, as you can see, and this is only part one. This is day one of five that's coming out, and this is the beginning of the story. And I thought I'd give you guys this first because you need this information to understand later on why the Spring Wardens are how they are and how the League of Order are the way they are and how, again, the Wilderberg became the way they are and how they all were fighting against each other and then unified at the end or beginning, should we say, of season one, which has been played in the background to combat against the Darklings and join forces. And if you've enjoyed today's video, I know it's been a, a really long one, and it's taken a lot of time, honestly. This has been the longest project that I've been doing on the channel. I've been doing this behind closed doors. We did the, the timeline on the live stream, but the editing and the scripting and the storytelling, I've done this all myself, over editing myself. I've put a ton of hours in this, to hopefully, for you Color Dragons fans like myself to enjoy this and hopefully in the future we can make this obviously a better and better experience and the better and better I get myself in editing. So if you've enjoyed this video and you enjoy your channel and you are loving the Christmas theme today with the, the new Christmas jumper we've been popping, new happy, happy Christmas, fallout edition. If you enjoy the christmas period honestly smash the like comment and subscribe guys it's been a pleasure to have been with you all this time on this color dragon journey and my youtube content creator journey it's, it's been just honestly magical and with every single sub that we've been closing down almost to 5k we hopefully might get there for christmas so with all of that i hope you've enjoyed it smash the like comment and subscribe one last time and until the next uh, episode in the series of the Call of Dragons Law, stay safe, stay safe, you guys, and peace out.